We're joined now by Dr. Daryl Peel, our livestock marketing specialist for Extension. And Daryl, the USDA releasing a, a couple reports in the last few days. Let's talk about the cattle on feed re report first. Yeah, so the July cattle on feed report showed that uh, placements in June were down about 8% and that was more than expected. So that was a bit of a surprise. Marketings were about as expected down about 4%, uh, but the large drop in placements pulled the on-feed inventory down a little bit more than expected. So we're running about 1.6% below a year ago. This is the eighth consecutive month that the cattle on feed inventory has decreased. So we're in that mode now where the tighter cattle supplies is really catching up with the feedlots. Let's talk about heifers now and kind of the picture there uh, in terms of feedlots. Yeah, so July also included a quarterly breakdown of steers and heifers on feed. We were anticipating that number. Uh, in April, if I can back up a second, that, that uh, heifer percentage of the total feedlot inventory started to drop enough to make us think maybe we would see it continue to drop. It actually ticked just slightly higher again in the July report. So heifers still represent about 38% of all the cattle and feedlots doesn't suggest that we're holding back a lot of heifers yet from the standpoint of the, the feedlot side. Cattle inventory report also released. What did that show? Yeah, so the, the mid-year cattle inventory report, uh, you know, this is a report we did not get last year. So it's a little hard to interpret. We can't compare it year over year. We have two years ago. But the bottom line is that most all of the categories in this report were down, certainly from two years ago. Uh, but if you look at, for example, the total beef cow inventory or the total beef replacement heifer inventory, both of those numbers were actually the lowest in the history of this report, which goes back to 1973. So everything about this report combined with the cattle on feed report would say that we're probably not really trying to expand the herds yet. And does any, do any of these numbers and these reports change your outlook or, or make you shift just a little bit? <laughs> you know, it really doesn't. I mean, this is the mode we've been in. We've been wanting, you know, watching for, for, for many months now, indications that we were beginning to retain some heifers that would lead to herd expansion. Uh, this just says it's really more of the same. Uh, we continue down this path. So, um, you know, my outlook hasn't fundamentally changed in probably the longest period in my career. That's a, for at least two years, we've been telling basically the same story and there's just no indication yet that it's changing. And consumer demand still high. Talk about that just just for a minute. I mean, there's still a, a, a big appetite for beef, I guess. There is. You know, beef production is beginning to fall. Again, we've got tight cattle supplies. That inevitably leads to tighter beef supplies. But beef, uh, you know, beef prices continue high. Uh, we've seen no real indication that consumers are turning away from beef in any way, even though there's lots of alternatives out there. So as long as that's the case, then, uh, the, you know, the combination of tight supplies uh, from the cattle on up through the beef supplies uh, means that we can expect uh, prices to continue to be very strong and probably move even higher. All right, Daryl. Well, thanks for staying on top of it for all of us, and we'll see you again soon.